Well, um, hello all. Thanks for attending. And actually, it's um, it's, it's a pleasure that I have uh, that we have you here in um, ICF Women event. And thank you, Gurbinder, for the, the amazing organization uh, that you have been done uh, doing the last few uh, weeks. I believe it's been something like month and uh, two months now since we started this. Um, uh, organizing this event and uh, thank you for actually making it happen and thanks for all who attended on time. Um, uh, would you like to make a brief uh, intro in the beginning, Corbinder? Go. Yeah, let me do that. Yeah. So, uh, good evening, everybody, and this is ICF Oman chapter from the Middle East, and I'm very happy that members have joined from all over the world today. Today, our speaker is uh, Mohammed Sharaf um, El Din. He's a he's a professional certified coach, and one of the earliest uh, team coaching and culture transformation practitioner in the Middle East, with over two thousand five hundred hours of hands on practice. Uh, Mohammed Sharaf is an uh, expert in organizational and leadership development, and he has been delivering uh, and administrate, administering systemic coaching and development programs to catalyze growth and maximize leader potential. A very interesting person, a team player, and, and a person who has been developing leadership talents across the region and across the globe, resolving conflicts. Uh, by being a natural innovation, uh, enabling innovation. He's also a business owner and an entrepreneur and has immense knowledge in the field of organization development, business transformation, program management, and research and development. It's our honor and privilege that we are able to invite Mohammed today from all the way from the <clears throat> beautiful pyramid city of the Nile and the, and the pyramids from Cairo, Egypt, and he will be sharing with us his expertise on the subject of systemic tools. Welcome, Mohammed Sharaf. Please, the lectern is yours. Uh, thank you, Gurbinder. Actually, I'm really uh, stunned with, uh, with this introduction. I mean, you know, we're doing this. It's, is it me? You know, <laughs> is this me? <laughs> so it's, really, it's um, much more simple than that. And actually, uh, maybe when, when I'm mentioning that being the one of the first practitioners in, in the Middle East when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, Arab uh, practitioners, because I started this practice in, back 2011 um, and 2012. And actually, I believe that uh, it's um, it's been uh, the, you know, I've, I've been progressing with my clients, working with them uh, with this modality, which was actually started to uh, be, being promoted in the Middle East and that's where um, actually it comes. However, I know that there are team coaches who work before me uh, when it comes from other nationalities or countries. So thanks all for attending and thank you, Gurbinder. I believe um, today's um, uh, actually, um, if, if it was, um, yani if, if it would be nice, actually this today's session is mostly an interactive session. So uh, if we can uh, actually be there and actually interact together, that would be great. And I just wanted to start off with, um, and this is, uh, and if, and if you pardon me, and, uh, so whoever is comfortable to open the camera and interact, that would be uh, much great. And actually today uh, we were talking about trust and trust tools. And actually, when we talk about it, actually, I'm, uh, you know, it comes to my mind, my relationship with my daughter, Maria, <laughs> you know, and when we talk about, you know, my daughter, Maria, she's uh, one year old now, she's a toddler, uh, one, one, one year, about 14 months now, it's one, one year, uh, two months. And whenever she's around in the, in, the, in the apartment doing, you know, opening the closets and opening the, the uh, doing what she's doing, you know, she's having her task and in, in actually doing, uh, cur being curious around and actually fetching things and understanding what's, what's, what's the world around her through touching and through actually working. So when she comes to, to my closets and to my wardrobes and she starts getting off my things, I just look at her, Maria, and she looks at me, you know, this this <laughs> innocent look, you know. And actually, uh, in a way, I, I have to actually leave whatever I'm having according to the emergency and whatever is happening and just go to her and just close the closet and take her and give her another thing to play with. And she she ain't convinced, you know, she, she still didn't finish her task. So what is normal is what, what she will do. She will come back again and she will open the closet and she will start getting everything out, you know. <laughs> 
and it keeps going <laughs> here and there until I just carry her, carry her out of the room or just close the closet with a key or something so that I make sure that she doesn't get all my, my, my stuff out, especially especially this one with the watches and perfumes. This is the one that actually <laughs> I, really, I really value in the apartment. So, and it comes to my mind that each and every time, Yani, Yani, I know that this will happen. You know, this this is Maria. She's 14 year, months old, <laughs> and she will keep doing this again and again and again. I don't have any secret recipe to deal with it. So, um, and do you have any idea how to how to deal with that? Do you have any toddlers who can maybe share experiences around how this? How can I trust her not to open this closet? So, anyone wants to share or something? Have you tried going into the closet with her? Try going to the closet with her. That's that's an amazing thing. So, and <laughs> yeah. What is she curious about? Mm -hmm. She's curious about you know she, she wants to uh, to navigate everything around the place and actually get get things you know from uh, she wants to understand what's there what are we hiding and actually get it out and understand all these objects what are they used for and why, why are they there sorry mm -hmm. so um, so that's a very good question and thank you sorry my, uh, sorry <laughs> and and i believe you to her, about maybe you my could teach her how to go through the closet show her around the closet mm -hmm. But she wants to see what's in the closet and she wants to touch it. She wants to open it and smell the perfumes one by one and actually use the watches one by one, you know, and see how they actually and put them around in the, in the, in the place. And not, not only my perfumes and my, 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 my watches, it's also everything else, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it's my underwear, it's her mother's underwear, anything, you know, that goes around. <laughs> I, I guess give her give her the freedom, uh, provided it's safe. So give her the freedom. One, two, three, four, ten times. She'll she'll then she'll stop. The more you you resist and push back, the more she be curious. That's the human nature. Yes, uh, that's that, that's that's a good one. Uh, however, she still wants to know what's in there. You know, I, I mean, she's, that that won't hold her curiosity. You know. So um, in a way, maybe I, I can align with her. I can go and fetch with her. However, the end, the end result is she wants to know what's inside it. So actually, and, and um, I mean, I'm, I'm mentioning maybe, in, are there any ideas there around? You know? So I, actually, I, I can't trust her anymore with my closet. So I just close the room, close the door and keep her out of the room until we go together to sleep. And after we finish sleeping, I get her out of the room and just clock it back again. That's what I do now. So anybody can have any other solution? Maybe you can give me a coaching question on how to trust her again. Have Maybe you... the question I would like to pose to you, sorry. Sabine, you want to, you want to go first? Maybe some stories for you. Sure. So my kids are big now, so I, I, I think I might have forgotten a little bit. But uh, what about exploring with her, um, you know, what could be her secret zone in her room? And you have your secret zone and she has her secret zone. And sometimes you can take a little peek, but it's a no-touch no zone. Um, create her own no-touch zone. Does she understand what's her zone? Because actually she, she considers the apartment all her zone, you know? <laughs> She's still 14 months. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I think they, they can to start to understand, but maybe that's part of the, I'm just, you know, brainstorming with you, but maybe that's part of the topic. Thank you. She doesn't know there are zones. Yeah, she's still, you know, I believe still at this age, she, she doesn't understand the, you know, the ownership, you know, she's, she, owns every, she, she owns us, she owns everything, you know. <laughs> So um, actually, this you know, I, I, I mean, this is maybe my most troubling question at the moment in trusting and actually how to move with trust with my daughter. And actually, it comes to my mind what is happening inside the organizations and inside many systems. And actually, I, I wanted to start this off to ask you, you know, as, as individuals, you know, when you are working with, um, when you have in your personal relationships 
when you have a situation like the one I'm having with my daughter, can you rebuild trust with her to actually, or give her opportunities and chances again to work uh, with, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to, be, to, to, to feel safe while she's around my closets? You know, do you have something like this in your relationships when you have uh, any, uh, maybe, um, can you rebuild trust when, after it's broken? You know, I'm having a real serious issue with my, with my daughter and I want to actually to understand, you know, if you have this, and if it's an absolutely no, just annotate, use annotation tool that's in um, uh, Zoom and mark, you know, where you are whenever you have, um, uh, maybe um, uh, something, you know, if, if you can rebuild trust again, is it a yes or is it a no or maybe, or maybe you are somewhere in this scale, just use annotate and zoom and put your mark at this scale. Consider this from yes to, to no, consider this as scale. Yeah, go ahead, Gauri, you have uh, a question? Yeah, or? Uh, no, it's not a question. Um, I was hearing you repeatedly say that She's young, your daughter is really small, and you're wondering how you might establish boundaries with her. Uh, what comes to my mind is my own experience raising my son uh, and Bruce Lipton, Dr. Bruce Lipton. Uh, he's talked about life script. Zero to seven is when you are downloading your programs. Uh, and connecting the two and answering your question, we have never spoken to our son at any age, whether it was counted in months or years, as though he's a child and he won't understand. Uh, it's always been the way we, I speak to my husband or to my friend saying, this is okay and this is not okay. And this is not okay for reasons A, B, C. This is how we've always spoken with him. So, um, and we have never had the challenges like you just now described. Uh, so to give you an instance of how this thing works, it plays out because it's a very different philosophy of uh, trusting a person irrespective of the rate, age. Uh, so I don't know of any other child um, uh, that sleeps with a chocolate given to him by his bedside with the promise that it's to be only eaten in the morning. And that's the way he's always been talked to by us saying, you are smart, you are trustworthy. I trust you to sleep with this. It's given to you at eight o'clock tonight, but you will only have it when you wake up in the morning. And he has never tried to sneak it in. He has never tried to do any of the things that we associate with kids that they have no re uh, resistance or they have no self-control. On the contrary, uh, this is just one of the many instances. So I would ask you, how, how is it that you convey to your daughter that this is your zone and it's not to be walked into or these are your perfumes and they are not to be touched? I think it's the tone, it's the body language, it's the way you say it uh, that conveys. I think rather than repeatedly saying, and I have seen uh, this a lot, uh, and Bruce Lipton talks about it as well. In fact, I bring it in my executive coaching. I, I coach CFOs. I, uh, I'm a, a C-suite coach. And... I have a CFO whose challenges in the boardroom are, are being talked about now with me as a coach. But when I did his neuro-linguistic programming exercises, these are incidents that have taken place in his family. His uh, issues with authority, his issues with trust go so far back that he's not able to uh, you know, push back in the boardroom. So I just wanted to say that because you, you dwelled on um, Mariam, and uh, Mariam. I thought this yeah. is pertinent as coaches to know, Thank using you. Bruce Lipton. Yes, actually, actually, it's a, it's a very good way, and I actually have five elder children than her, but actually, I believe that understanding, you know, the, um, the fact that she's, um, yani she's, she, she's my sixth child, not my sixth. However, mm -hmm. yani, I believe that at some age, ages, like, you know, one year, one year and two months, a toddler, you know, 14 months only, she, she has some understanding of the world that she, she owns it, you know, and still there is no privacy, no boundaries. And I believe that yani, at this stage, I have to be aligned with, with who she is, you know, and how she, 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 she is presumed to actually, um, yani, I believe that, that the first advice that I took from, I believe, um, um, uh, the, 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 the first advice that I took from Romaine was actually to play with her and open the, the, 
this is the the best thing things she enjoys really when Roman said to, to me this this is the 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 exact thing she wants us to do to actually c- come and dwell with her and what she's doing and actually forget about us being adults and forget about uh, you know, uh, um, being uh, occupied and actually or or being actually the privacy or our boundaries or whatever because actually this this is what she is doing and this is who she is at this stage so uh, in a way um, I'm, I'm, I, I shifted the, the thing now into thank you Sabine for this nice amazing you know sharing that she has two sons who will not eat it however it left the chocolate gone find chocolate or something else in the kitchen yes <laughs> thank you so i'm going on mute. that's another way of um... actually dealing with it so um actually i i, I would love you actually to to uh, look and reflect on this question and see if somebody breaks your trust or somebody that you are really uh, uh, want to to create um, uh, a trust um, uh, a trustworthy uh, thing with with them, or build trust with them, and actually they break your trust each and every time you actually trust them to do something, they do another thing. Do you actually re- you know, give another opportunity to build trust? Yes, or sometimes you shut off and no, or maybe at sometimes you do this, and how frequently you do it? So uh, I saw only one score that came in nine point five from Sabine. And uh, do you, uh, does anyone have any other score? Maybe put it on chat from one to 10 instead of the annotate because actually annotation doesn't work here. Yeah, the annotate is not activated. I tried to do it, but it's not working. So let's use the chat. Yes, please, yeah. Okay, Ahmed Al Jabri, that's seven. Jamal Namani, eight. Thank you, Jamal. Okay. I think Paul questions, yes, answered differently for children and adults, yes. Four, Gurbinder, okay, eight, Fatima, okay. Yes. Okay, and thank you for that. So let's start from left to right, from maybe no to yes. So uh, how about uh, Gurbinder, can you share, please, your your answer? My answer was four. And uh, I, my personal experience has been that it's very, very, for me, uh, once the trust has been broken, it, it really takes a lot of effort on the other person's part to build my trust back. And my whole uh, engagement with the person, my whole uh, relationship with the person then is not what it used to be. So... Um, is that the answer you were looking for, or something else? That's um, that's uh, if that's you, and that's great. Thank you for that, Rabindar. So the next answer is somebody put seven. It's Ahmed Al 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 Abri. So Ahmed Al Abri, would you like to share with us the seven? What do you mean by your seven? So uh, can you unmute and and join and join the discussion? So. If you are not ready, so we can go to Jamel and Namani. Okay. Yes, uh, I've said I've said it. I I believe trust can be rebuilt at its, uh, as it can be broken at any moment moment of time. Uh, we always have hope and we always have a belief. Uh, trust always there, and we share the trust because it's like a mirror. If you if you trust other people, will trust you as well, uh, and you give it time to time and many trials. And also one thing to add, it is depends on who are you are dealing with. There are some trust, even if it's been broken 10,000 times, you need to rebuild them. Especially an example, if it's parents, if it's maybe uh, partners, uh, kids, you use somebody you can't, you, you can't live without having a trust with them. Maybe in the workplaces, it depends. It is sometimes, but you always hope to have a trust and you always have to believe it can be rebuilt. And you give it many times and then until you give up some time. Thank you, Jamal. That's great. So, uh, Gauri, can you sh- uh, share with us what, what do you mean by your eight? Um, yeah. yeah, I think the question has been simplified and life is really not so simple. So, I would say that the score would roughly eight is the median score. I could go to 10 and I could go down to five somewhere it falls on an eight on a daily basis. Uh, 
with children, of course, it's different, but I'm talking about professional relationships here when I say eight. Uh, I have had to change the way I see the world when I stepped out of full-time employment. Uh, I, I had the luxury of feeling offended, feeling heartbroken, feeling like somebody broke my trust when I was in a job. Uh, as I've reinvented myself uh, as a global executive coach and I work across eight countries, I have found that the definition of trust itself is different in different cultures. Germans are different when it comes to trust than Indians, um, and it's different from for uh, the Americans. Uh, why I say that is because how we evaluate somebody's trust in us or re-trusting them is a function of how they communicated something. Uh, what they said they would do and then they didn't do it. Uh, so the way I see the Germans ask me to do something, and I've lived and worked in Germany and in Singapore, I find is very different than the way an Indian person would ask me. So I have now come to evolve this concept of trust as a, as a flexible a set of uh, dimensions. And I'm not so touchy about someone dropping the ball. Uh, I would have been many years ago, but now I'm not. I, 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 I try and ask myself, was, was I clear enough in telling this person, this is what I expected? Did I draw my boundaries right? Uh, so I have a lot more, um, you know, buffer and uh, space now be before I say you broke my trust and you and I are never going to talk to each other again. So that's why it's an eight. Thank you, Lori, for this uh, for this sharing. And uh, Sabine, you you mentioned the nine, so I would love to uh, nine and a half. Okay, it's nine point five. <laughs> so um, the the question so I, I agree with uh, with Gori on on the fact that the notion itself is quite relative uh, quite cultural and from my own standpoint I put the nine and a half because not everything is acceptable so if I take criminal activity um, it will be my my boundary but even that I mean why not I could go into a prison and coach prisoners so to help them you know find th their path in life um, am I not, you know, in that way rebuilding the trust? So maybe not with me personally, but with um, society. And the one element that evolved in time for me is very connected to my son, the one that would go in the kitchen. Um, and he is not a rule abider. And with time, I came to realize that it wasn't personal. It wasn't about offending me. It wasn't, and it's this, you find the same place, same thing in the workplace. It's about somebody who's got just that incredible energy a lot of times and a way of seeing things that's different. And so every time there's a trust issue, um, the first thing I try to do is work on myself. So why does it offend me? Why does it bother me? Why is there something emotional? And, you know, 95% of the time, I'm going to find something that's part of my history and that sh that's not really on that person's part. And then the next question is, what does it mean? Um, what can we gain from this situation? Where do we go from there? And little by little, that there is no longer a trust issue. Thank you. Thank you, Sabine, for this uh, sharing. And Timothy, you're the one who gave 10 by 10. So <laughs> it's amazing. So Timothy, would you like to share, please? Well, I guess, I guess the question of trust uh, has got to do with the context and the content. First of all is that uh, if God can forgive us, why can't we forgive others? because trust is based on the one who has been, uh, whose trust has been broken. If my trust has been broken, then it's for me to forgive that person in order to move on and rebuild the trust. As long as I cannot forgive that person, then there's no question about any trust to talk about in the first place. So I think, I think forgiveness is the most important in order for us to rebuild trust. If we can't forgive, then there's no trust. On the other hand, if I lose the trust of the other person, uh, similarly, I think it's for that person to forgive me in order for me to move on. And if a person cannot forgive me, then there's no trust at all. So the question, the key word here is basically, 
are we willing to forgive one another in order to move forward? Uh, whether we call it professionally or not professionally, I think at the, base of, at the end of it, we are still human beings. And to be human is to, to people say to, to, to make a mistake in life is, is part of human being. But uh, if we can learn to forgive one another, I think the question of trust is not an issue all, all, all together. Uh, but the effort of the person who wants to win back the trust is to show care. If I want to win somebody's trust, if I don't care, then I cannot win trust. There's no way that I can win the trust of a person if I don't care. And I think uh, care is something which that I need to exercise, that I need to uh, demonstrate, and I need to live with it, and I need to mean it. Uh, to make sure that whatever trust I've lost in the other person, that I can win back that trust and for that person to forgive me, likewise, vice versa. That's how I see it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's really, all the participations are really profound and they're really, uh, thank you all for your openness. And actually, I, I really love it. love how you all articulated, you know, the, the trust from actually, uh, it's how hard it's, it is to rebuild trust when it's broken and how to understand your the other person point of view and how you know you understand that it's not personal you know as the case of sabine and how to understand to, to work on forgiveness and how to uh, actually start working forgiveness as timothy actually came up and actually i see here um yani lori was actually um yani uh, proving what sabine said and actually it's uh, um, and, you know, it's something inside us of being triggered when people behave in a way we don't like or accept. And actually, this is where we start involving ourselves in stories that may actually make us uh, uh, feel upset and give us the, the reason to actually to break trust or actually to start put pushing off uh, the person from in front of us because he makes us feel bad. We, we feel pain when, when trust comes. It comes either uh, you you gain something because it's actually something that that comes in as um, um, you know a, a trust is 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 is, um, is is a means where you keep yourself vulnerable to keep to actually accept uh, that the other person actually will will cause you um, I mean, something that that will come in as a benefit in the future. So so what is happening here is is actually we, we foresee our relationship to bring us something that we need to actually um, uh, mark and actually uh, understand and actually co-create something with them for, for the reason or the purpose we have in the relationship. And from this benefit is not, or the expectations are not met, we feel upset. We actually, we start feeling pain and we start involving ourselves and actually in a way that's where trust starts to be a question. Can I trust you again or not? And here comes different, we, we are different, and with our differences, we have different answers on this. And actually, um, I believe that this is what we will explore today. This was just an introduction or um, maybe um, uh, a, a start to our session today. And uh, actually, just to make it uh, very briefly an, an uh, introduction, our intention today is to explore building trust uh, for coaches in systemic relationship, our desired outcome to actually put some definitions, you know, it's about trust systems and systemic coaching. And I see here, most of you are actually acquainted and aligned on what is systemic coaching, how trust works in systems, the role of coach and coaching relationship and building trust in organizations and conflicts as opportunities for trust, building trust. And now Timothy added forgiveness. So, so actually, I believe that we can talk also about forgiveness today, just as you know, from uh, it came in the system. So let's see how it will evolve. So actually, uh, our agenda for today, it's a check-in and story. That was my story with, uh, uh, with Maria, trust scale and agenda and social contract. That's where we are now. Some definitions, what is trust model? Yeah, I'll just share one model of trust that yeah, actually I'd like, I'd like to uh, talk about. It's called landscape of trust and role of coaching systems and then closure and check out. And it's, it all will depend on your interaction and maybe we will... Uh, have uh, the privilege of, uh, can, can we use some breakout rooms, Gurbinder? Is it okay for us? Sure. sure thank you. So that would be great. So um, uh, our social contract, and thank you for actually uh, starting off uh, on the, you know, actually uh, in, in a great place of openness and actually uh, mostly you know, actually the, the cameras and, and being interactive session. 
And actually, um, you can actually intervene or ask any comment. This is something that we started now. Manage your energy, whatever you need to do. Uh, just thinking, uh, moving, uh, being, and, and it's, it's uh, no judgments, whatever saying. Uh, use more of me statements. That would be great. And distill. The, the last thing that maybe I would ask for is distilling so that we can keep space for um, others to, uh, to talk. So uh, do you want to add anything to the social contract that we have for this session? Is it okay? Just raise your thumbs up or something. Any, 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 any mark? <laughs> thank you, Gurbinder. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Timothy. Thank you, Jamal. Yes, thank you. So, if you want to add anything, just add it to the chat, and I uh, will love that actually to uh, move on. So um, now we have uh, one one of the activities that we have. Are you acquainted with Menti? Menti, the the tool. So if you have on your screen now, you can actually scan the barcode that you can see or with a mobile camera, and it will take you to a browser where you can actually start answering this question. What is trust for you? Or use any browser that you have. If you are having a laptop, uh, go to www.menti.com and use the code 94319176, the one on the left hand side down there, and I put it now on chat. Please input your, uh, give your inputs here on uh, what are, uh, uh, what is trust for you? That is how you define trust. So we have now the answers coming. And um, somebody said, trust is the foundation of the relationship. So that's uh, very profound. Trust is higher than love in a relationship. OK, so that's another profound meaning. Trust is the willingness to suspend all judgments and allow other person to share who or he, she, she or he or she is. So that's another one and that's um, coming in also. Confidence, confidence, and starting to speak without fear of judgments on what is said. Okay, so trust here is associated in a way with judgments and with love and with a foundation for relationship. Uh, uh, so, and trust for me is where I can share without limitation. I'm sure whatever I share will not be shared to any other third party and will not be used against me. Wow. So that's being about sharing and making sure that it will not be used against you. So that's great. Trust, the converse, start the conversation without fear of judgment. Okay, so that's another. Totally understanding with, total understanding with true reflection. That's another profound meaning. So um, does anyone have to like to share, you know, um, whatever, or, or have any question about whatever is mentioned here in this, and, and, and um, from the from the colleagues maybe something provoked him or maybe agrees or disagrees with, with something do you like to or to you know, maybe um come in with some reflections or something on what's your uh, you all shared if i can share what is my understanding of trust here yes. jamal so so when you trust somebody that you have a total belief, this guy will not stab you at the back, will not backbite you. He will have the same understanding what, what, what you're sharing. It is true reflection of what you're saying and you expect the same from him. Uh, you have a secret, you will not disclose it. And uh, similarly, then he can give you his secret, you will not disclose it. 
So you share same uh, understanding, same relation, same same everything. So and uh, he, and also if you give him a task, you trust him will do it. And similarly, he'll give you a task, he'll trust you will do it. So that that sharing of same level of understanding uh, through reflection of of emotions and and everything, that is the real trust. And you can leave behind somebody doing something you, you trust him, that you leave him alone. You just told him to do it. He would do it. An example in the workplace, and it is similarly in all other areas. Wow. Oh. Okay. Um, thank you, Jamal. Uh, so it's about secrets. It's about um, making sure that you you are in safe space. So, what else? What else? Yeah. Anyone else wants to share about you know how how you define trust? How how we define trust? Okay. I would say that trust is a question of choice, and the choice is for us to to believe in that person. Uh, and to have faith in that person because tr uh, trust goes along with faith and belief. If we, if we believe the person and we have faith in that person, then we trust the person. If we don't believe and trust, uh, have faith in that person, then we won't trust that person at all. And the other things that I think we need to also understand is that when we say we trust that person, we do not put that definition of trust based on our expectation because once, once we put our expectation to it, then we are telling the person, this is how I see trust. And as long as you, you see it as long as, 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 long as you, you, you see trust as how I see it, then that is trust. Then that is, that is putting our expectation on a person. But for me, is when I trust a person, I don't ask a person to say that, hey, you must trust like how I trust you. I will say, I trust you. And I'm not going to put my expectation on you, but uh, I believe and I have faith in you. So this is, this is more of giving rather than receiving. And a lot of time when we say we trust somebody, we expect something from the person. And I think there's no longer a trust, there's a transaction. Uh, in a transaction, you are, you're just selling or buying. But when you talk about trust, you don't sell, you don't buy, but you give. You give your trust to the person. And that willingness to give the trust to the person goes with your faith and your belief in that person. And to me, if I don't believe and trust, uh, if I don't believe and, and, and have faith in that person, how can I trust a person? So it is a question of where you stand in your, in your understanding of trust. Wow. That's what I say. Wow. Um, thank you, Timothy, for that. And actually, this trust and faith and belief is something that actually we, we all have. So uh, let's have just a very brief introduction to some of some of the uh, important definitions about system about uh, trust you know, what what we how how we we define trust actually and the most actually uh, the the things that that sum, sums up trust it is expectations not to be harmed when vulnerable with a foreseeable value yet to come actually we move in trust and in, in, when we look at trust in relationships we normally put some faith we put some some actually expectations that we will not be harmed. And this is what, what have been said in most of the uh, uh, inputs that came in from, uh, from you, that I will not be harmed. I will not be, um, uh, nobody will ju be judgmental with me. I will actually, I'll be understood. Um, and, and actually being uh, without any, uh, it being used against me, this, these are things actually in a way, and actually it's not only about secrets, it's also about expectations of competences, uh, expectations of, when you're talking about organizations, um, expectations of certain outcomes. You know, when, when I am actually absent, that the employees will actually work well in my absence. They will actually do their tasks. They will finish their things without, without actually waiting for me to actually overlook them or something. Uh, it's about trusting my manager to do the right thing for me when actually they hire me and whenever they do the performance management and whenever they give uh, uh, any feedback about me, they will talk, they will not badmouth me. 
uh, trusting actually my colleagues to actually keep me in the social in their social network and actually keep me uh, updated with their info and actually accept me as uh, they're part of their family or they're actually uh, it's it's there is something that I'm actually looking for that uh, that I believe that there is something that that there is a value yet to come for me from investing in this relationship with more trust. And actually, if I, I reflect on what's happening between myself and Maria, as an example, I'm expecting actually, uh, um, um, I'm, I'm opening up for her, uh, her curiosity to the world and actually to see the world with, with different eyes and actually learn about it. However, sometimes, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's maybe harmful for me at some times and waste, waste of time when it comes to that she's opening my closets while I'm just getting prepared and have only two minutes to run for my work or for my, my next assignment. So maybe I'll, I'll be harmed if I give more time to let her look at my persons and, and my watch, you know? So sometimes that's where I feel in a way, uh, um, I, I can't show this vulnerability at this time, Maria, so I, I have to leave you now. So <laughs> just, to, just to get off my, <laughs> my room and my closets. So there's 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 actually it's and and there is something that maybe uh, uh, Timothy I, I I loved how you articulated things. It's about the ability to predict what other people will do in situations. You know, if we can surround ourselves with people we trust, we can create a safe present and space and an even better future. So whenever we can predict, uh, so if I predict that the nature of Maria is being curious at this age and learning from what's happening in the, in the zone, that's, that's very much uh, really her. So at this stage, it's, it's safe for me to, under, to, to, to manage myself around who she is now. Like, you know, like if, if we look at maybe one, one of my, my, my colleagues, is one, one of my friends, I, I was astonished that he went to the United States to, to, uh, to actually get trained on uh, lions uh, appraising or, 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 you know, this working with lions and maybe um, taming them, you know, taming lions. And actually, he, he, he took a course on that, and he is now, uh, he has a lion at his, uh, um, his house here in Egypt. <laughs> it's a very strange and awkward thing. <laughs> so, uh, and he said that whenever he goes to the lion, he actually, he, he, he keeps his hand shaped. Because actually, the lion, when they lick their hands, they take off all the, the hair from there. And it feels very painful for him. However, this is how the lion expresses their love. So predicting that this is the lion and this is their nature and this is how the lion expresses the love for, for him by licking him. But however, this lick is really uh, uh, harmful. You know, in a way, when anticipating this, it doesn't cause, cause any psychological pain. You know, wow, he, he understands that this will happen each and every time. He exposes himself to get licked by the lion he is taming. So in a way, uh, uh, when you have a cat and it gets to scratch you when, when it is in the mating time or something that she wants to run away at the mating time and the mating season of the cats, that's very normal because you're, you understand cats and this is how they work. So in a way, it's the predictability is something that's very important here. The second thing, it's about the exchange. It's the value exchange. So, you know, what, what, what does Maria, you know, can, how, what does Maria give me as a, as a child? You know, she's, she's actually, She's, she's my child. She's carrying my name. I love her because I love her mom. I love, uh, actually, uh, I want to see her a better human being. And I want her to carry my name and always pray for me when, when I'm dead. So actually, she, she gives me lots of meanings that I'm really foreseeing her as a human being that will be a unique person in the future. And I want to be part of her life forever, you know. And I'm always associated. She always has my name associated to her and want her to have pride in that. So in a way, she doesn't understand this at this stage. I know this. So in a way, it's, this is how I, I actually invest in building trust with her in this way. So, and this is what is happening in organizations uh, and in any system that has a purpose. People there are, are there for a reason. You know, the purpose there and the drivers that get, got them in this place to, to actually to act on drivers or things that are related to the organization or related to uh, their life, maybe getting more income, being seen, actually having their own um, um, privileges and ranks in the, in the community, having uh, new relationships. 
uh, having whatever they are, they are there, they're actually there to, to have an exchange. So in return to that, they provide competence, they provide commitment, they provide uh, networking, they provide uh, whatever is expected from them. And here, sometimes in some cases, in some relationships, we actually have some delayed reciprocity. Actually, sometimes we, we invest in relationships like what I'm investing in Maria's uh, uh, in Maria as a child, because at some time, sometime in the future, maybe I will be very old and she may take care of me at some point of time. Maybe she will give me a good, you know, dua or or prayer afterwards, you know, when when when, when I'm I'm dead or something. So maybe maybe I'm not repaid now from her, except that I love actually watching children. I love them. <laughs> But but and sometimes when you get or to hire a new employee or hire or maybe get hired in a new organization and you don't still totally understand what what is it for you there, you know that in the future it would be better with this. So actually having this look at the future and look looking at understanding that the future would be better when I invest in this trust or this person, and even if I don't take a reciprocal value now, that it will come in the future. And actually, I will actually be repaid at this uh, in, in the future. It actually gives me more drive to actually invest more in this relationship. And at this stage, I actually can expose vulnerabilities. And this is where everybody mentioned safety, mentioned sharing pieces of me, sharing responsibilities that I have, maybe. And this is most of one of the most difficult things in executive coaching, actually, especially uh, I worked a lot with, with technology companies and especially engineers because I, I am an engineer in the, the and I graduated from engineering school and this is where I was before being uh, a coach and working as an external coach. Most of my clients are the same, you know, they were technical people who actually turned to be managers then leaders. And it's very hard for somebody who's really was the best and, as, and the technical guru, not he does, to actually start trusting younger talents who are still not fully uh, um, or not yet full technically to, to actually to, to, to fill in the cavity that he is leaving for them. So delegation here, mentoring, supporting them and exposing, you know, the business at risk to give somebody who's less sen senior than you and, and, and actually delegate a task for them to finish. And you know, well, they will not finish the way that you will do, especially the first few times. This is something that's really, you are giving them an advantage and and you are waiting for a delayed response, reciprocity. And how, how it, you manage this and you manage the, the, the struggle that, happen, that happens within the, 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 the client who is actually struggling with, with understanding how can I really expose my vulnerability at this stage and how can I expect this to cover my problems that is now coming to me as stress coming to me as I'm, I'm not able to trust anyone around me. I'm feeling lonely. I'm feeling actually in a way very challenged by, by the, the full expectations that are put on me and nobody that I, from the team is, is really, uh, can take what, what I'm, I'm taking and cannot understand the big picture as I do understand. And it is something that's really challenging when working with clients. And here, I mean, actually, when, when we look at trust from this stage, actually at this role, I believe it is one core as, and I will agree back with, uh, with your definitions that were put here, that it is really the foundation of relationships. It is what glues systems, systems when we're talking systems are people who are actually working together for a common purpose, like an organization, like a team, like maybe some people who are working together and, and uh, that, that are co-living in a house and having different apartments and having some dynamics together. They actually trust here is really something that's that's the foundation. This is the glue that brings reality on you know the collective intention of of of, of the group or the system. Uh, um, and actually here here um, yeah, I, I I have to agree with this. I will have to agree on 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 everything that's written here. Actually, people get advice from people they trust. Yes, I trust them, and I can when I take advice from somebody who I expose some vulnerability to. Uh, um, to to make sure that uh, actually they they um, uh, they they will give me a, the right advice. Maybe I'm looking for mentors or consultants to support me. I will not expose myself unless I or, or put myself in vulnerability unless I trust that they will give me uh, delayed recipro reciprocal value. That's and a value exchange that I'm looking forward to. 
So having this said, so can we maybe go for um, uh, um, some breakout rooms for eight minutes or something? Maybe we can talk together about this definition of trust systems, relationships, and what we had here uh, from the previous discussions and this trust and no trust scale that we had and maybe have a discussion and come back with some learning. Maybe eight minutes would be good. How many Are people to each room? Yes. How many people should we put in each room? Um, I guess that with the number that we're having now, uh, it's, uh, it's nine, um, so threes. So maybe three rooms of threes. That would be great. If somebody will not share in the breakout rooms, please tell us so that we, we, we distribute you uh, in, in the rooms that you, you will not. So before, uh, Gurbinder, before you just, uh, did you start the breakout rooms or not yet? So can you please just put beside your name if you will not participate, if you are not able to participate, please put, put a label beside your name. Or maybe if you are able to participate, put a yes, green, a green yes, you know this, in participants, go in participants and mark yes i will participate i will be actively participating in the room so uh, there is one no okay that is coming in from mona Salem. she will not participate okay who else will not be able to participate who will be able to participate uh, guys who will be able to participate just put uh, yes timothy said yes who else jamal said no fatima said no so who will participate guys <laughs> timothy only so if you like timothy to maybe do some reflections maybe because you're uh, the only one here that we have now so. <laughs> I, I think i think since i was hoping since uh, i had some high hopes that we will all be uh, actually participating and this will be a very engaging <laughs> session <laughs> <laughs> i guess i guess uh, some people yeah. Mohammed, should we create two rooms with the people who have uh, confirmed yes? So, okay, so if you're uh, okay, um, so one room with you, Gurbinder, and one, the other one with Timothy, that would be great. So that's maybe okay, sure. great, great. I, I really trust that you will maybe have some good discussions. So uh, you have now the breakout rooms, they are set. If you just can join them, um, just join the breakout room that you're assigned to, please. So now we have Timothy and Majda, Jadidi, and one room. Everybody else, IG, Latifa, not yet. Apil, uh, Ajmi, and Fatma Hussein, Romain, they're also, they didn't join. So Jamal and Naamani, not assigned, and Mona Salima not, is not assigned. So, uh, Okay, I guess I guess um, maybe you can do uh, pr press on uh, pause. Uh, so let's close the rooms. Okay. Mm. Let's begin. I think we have uh, six people here. Okay, so let's start. So, the rooms are closed. So you can, you, you know. 25 seconds, 24. 24 seconds, yeah. Yeah. We are very sorry, Tim Timothy. We just uh, realized it's it's a very few participants who are really active. So if you can continue the discussion here in the room, that would be great in the main room. So that would be great. So uh, please, you can just start sharing off, please. Mm. 
Are you ready to participate, Timothy or Gurbinder or whoever? Uh, yeah. Yeah, will you, will you please read out your question again? Because I was yes. kind of busy in the administration. Are there any, any reflections on what was what have happened until now from the beginning of the session to now until we went to the definition of, um, of trust as we presented? Okay, my, my reflection basically is, uh, first of all, I, I just want to note that when you started by sharing about uh, your daughter, your, your one one years plus daughter and you're using that as a, as a metaphor or either as an analogy to talk about trust relationship and I think in the context of between a parent and a child there's a different level of trust and relationship we're talking about versus when we are leading a team when we talk about, when, when we talk about a leader who is leading a team at work uh, I think that there are two separate contexts uh, but each has its own place of showing and demonstrating trust in order to, to, to either win the trust and to be the foundation of relationship as what some have shared earlier. So I, I wouldn't want to take your example of your daughter and then say that this is how we're going to do it at work because at work is a totally different kind of relationship because we are talking about a leader and a team members when you're doing a group, uh, when you're leading a group uh, the kind of trust level that you build with your team members, uh, the maturity and the level of uh, understanding with each other is totally different. So, on, on that context, I, I would want to refer to the uh, working relationship of trust. Uh, how do we build that working relationship of trust? Uh, so, in, in, in that context, I, I will reflect on basically that uh, my, my philosophy is I will always tell the people that, that works with me that first of all I trust them until the day they lose my trust meaning to say I'm giving them the first level of trust that I trust everybody unless one or all of them lost my trust then there is a broken relationship so therefore uh, means I'm giving them my trust first before I ask for their trust I'm saying that I'm giving you my trust means I trust all of you until the day comes when either one of you or all of you lose my trust, uh, then the, the question of trust comes into play to say, do we still have trust in this relationship? Is there still a, a, a foundation in this relationship? If there's no more foundation, then the whole relationship just is just broken. Yeah. Thank you for sharing this. And actually, I, I love the, the, you know, how, how uh, you, you, you opened the different contexts between uh, both of them. However, I, I may see it differently. You know, <laughs> and maybe I'll, I'll share, share this uh, maybe after some few reflections, because I would love to hear more from the field. So, um, Gurbinder, would you like to? Yeah, sure. uh, so, you know, for me, when, when I was reflecting on the definitions that you gave, two things came up for me. And uh, what came up for me is that, uh, and I'm, I'm talking from a workplace perspective here. And, and in a workplace, the employees who trust their colleagues and leaders are more likely to be open, honest, enthusiastic, collaborative, constructive, and, and it, it actually boosts the innovation and productivity. And I will, I, for, what I could see was I can actually break trust into two parts of trust, saying a practical trust and an emotional trust. So the practical trust is more basic in nature, more fundamental, like showing up on time, doing what you said you will do. People can rely on you for your, your competence and depend. That's, that's basic. I mean, if you don't have this, then uh, it's, it's terrible to even work with you. So this trust is fundamental. But the trust that I'm looking for is the next level of trust. And that's what is uh, becoming clearer from your definition. And that's what it's more about the teamwork. It's when people trust that you are on their side. And and that's a little complex because it's emotional in nature. So uh, And it's it's difficult to learn that. I'm a little worried about how am I going to, uh, you know, bring that into my team. Uh, uh, to trust them and to, for them to trust me. That's what became a little clearer. Of the, I hope I clarified or I did I complexed it even further. So yes, can you trust me? <laughs> yes, it's, it's a very difficult question actually. I mean, to, to bring actually to maybe what Timothy said 
actually that I show them that I'm giving them the first level of trust and giving this signal to them and actually allowing the, the benefit of, of my trust in the beginning. I trust you from the beginning. And now you want to take them to a next level of not just the practical trust, the practical side, talking about the emotional side, which is here actually the dynamic actually starts differently with different the differences in people. And actually when we look at how trust boils down to, to maybe uh, different uh, um, uh, in, 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 in different aspects. Actually, we, we have this kind of, of uh, the three, there are three dimensions that are actually working in trust at the same time. One of them is the predictability. Actually, to predict how the person or the other, uh, in the other one in the relationship will actually work. Whenever you have a predictable person, you will trust, you know, that any, how will they react whenever you do something? And this comes in, like, you know, if you, I will always predict that Maria is curious and her age and developmentally and psychologically, it's very uh, uh, normal for her to be curious and go around. And it is so similar, similar to being predictable about the behaviors of employees that I hire. That whenever I hire someone, I have to get a good assessment to predict their behavior at work. And this is my role as a manager to assess the person and predict how they will react and build a relationship. And there, there comes the emotional relationship that comes in with this person so that I can actually predict whether this person will come on time or not come on time, will deliver the assignment, will not deliver. It. This is too much for them. This is too few for them. This is uh, the, the right uh, uh, stress level that they actually uh, uh, they glow in. This is their genius. This is their dark side. So the predictability part is something that if I don't do my homework in as a manager, if I don't do the right assessments, if I don't really understand differences in personalities, differences in competences, differences in, 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 in behaviors and, and, you know, and I'm maybe I'm, I get deluded by maybe some, uh, um, um, uh, external crust of, or maybe an external image that was, you know, that I, I bought from the person that I hired. And then I predict something that doesn't happen. I always will have lots of pain because I'm, I'm not, it, they are not meeting my expectations. So here there is a role in trust to actually, uh, in trust building to let people understand who they are dealing with. When I gave the, the example or the metaphor of my kid, Maria, if I don't predict that this is normal for her, I actually, it's, I will, I will have actually to, I, each and every time she does this, I will get furious. <laughs> so I have to hold my emotions because actually it's not to hold my emotions. I have to manage myself because that is who she is. When I give this, the same metaphor with the lion or the same metaphor with the cat, you know, it is the same metaphor. It's the same thing when it happens with employees around you, even whether they're your managers, your leaders, your, um, your subordinates or your peers. They are people who have natures, they have uh, behaviors, they, have, they are predictable in a way. And it's your own duty as a manager or it's the, the, the person's duty to, to really predict their behavior according to lots of information gathering that he has to do about them. So they, we need to learn about each other. So building trust here is, is a part where we need to learn about who we are as human beings and actually set some social contracts on things that maybe you will put the, the predictable parts with, with adults, you know, when I'm talking about here in organizations, when we're working with people, we can set some policies, rules, so that we, our, if, if somebody is, something is against a predictable nature of a person, we put a policy for that and consequences, you know. And here, this is something that actually, that's what, why policies and rules are important in organizations, to make sure that the culture and the, is not affected by individuality inside the organizations. So here, predictability is one part of trust that we need to actually look at when we work with uh, the trust in systems. The other part is dependability. You know, dependability is, is mutual. It's if, if, and, and here, the two examples that came in from you, Timothy, and Gurbinder, when I'm a manager, and there's somebody who's working with me, I give them the first level of trust or give them the practical part of trust. This is where I can depend on them on what. And here comes, you know, my, my assessment and my uh, per permeability or my actually uh, acceptance 
to share something with them, to expose myself vulnerable to them and give them this task to, for them to finish and make sure from the predictability part that they can be dependable in this part. So it's mutual. I, I don't give them the task and do it myself. <laughs> I give them the task and make sure that they have the tools, they have the, the right knowledge, they have the right support to make it done. And actually, it takes some stages from the emotional part, and this is something you talked about, Gurbinder, from the emotional part to, to actually be sure that I turn from a skeptical person that they will do it to somebody who is really, each and every time I give them this task, I'm really comfortable and I, I, I'll actually release my back to them. I'm really safe, you know. Whenever I give them that this task, I, I just give it, you know, hey, come here, this is yours, you know. And just you just they give them an email, just give them the put the paper on their desk or whatever, because there is a high level of dependability and trust that they will do it the way that you want and the way that the work wants. And here it's a mutual thing. It's about your um your willingness to be open to to be to, to trust. On the other side, it's it's also the intention and the competence of the other side to actually to come to you and actually show up and actually be up to what they're dependable on. So when it comes to working relationships, it's the same as marriage relationships. It's the same as family. It's the same as uh, being neighbors at, at home. You can when can you depend on your brother? When can you depend on your partner? When can you depend on your children to do things? So this is something that you need to actually look at. And how much are you going to leave from your duties and expose your vulnerability to leave, then let them do it? The last part of trust is faith. And this is the, the thing I, I heard from you, Timothy, when you're talking about uh, uh, faith and belief that this person will actually act in a way that's really coming back to me in, in a good faith. This is where faith, faith comes, it's emotional. And this is the part, Gordon, that you said that's about emotions. You know, how, how you build trust from the emotional level, there is a big part that is emotional that needs to be managed in the system and the field, whatever it's a team, because maybe there's somebody who's predictable. I know I know well how will he, he or she will react at each and every situation. I know where the keys of the, the, the keys of this person, I know them very well. They can be dependable, they can be, be the best professionals, but there is something inside me that tells me that I can't actually approach them. I cannot build a relationship with them. There's something that is a block. You know, somebody, some people call it an energy block. Somebody, calls, some, some uh, coaches say it, it's uh, something emotional. I can't really withstand this person. They don't, I don't feel comfortable around them. There are lots of things that here that are coming in the emotional field that comes, you know, actually that, that we as coaches have to really look at and unleash, uncover. And here comes at one of the most important things in building trust is actually seeking what is the intention of me being here? What is my intention for my group or people or system? What is my intention for the workplace? This has to be actually collected individually from the system of the team or maybe the couple or maybe whatever kind of system it is. You need really to understand why I, am I here for and what I intend for you and actually uncover this. And whenever there is a conflict, and here, here comes conflicts and in, in, in maybe in, in how people look at the future of things, future of relationship, I'm coming here to be the boss of you. I'm coming here to be uh, your partner. I'm coming here to actually, for us to grow together. These are totally three different things. I'm coming here to uh, kick your ass out. <laughs> you know? And here comes lots of you know different intentions that actually, for me as a coach, I have to uncover this when working with the clients, because actually this part of faith is something that is intangible. Most of the time it's unspoken. Most of the clients don't really know it about themselves. So, and don't talk about it with the others. What kind of future I'm looking for myself in this organization? Is it, is it just a transit visit that I'm here for maybe a couple of years? to make a statement about my career and then move afterwards to some, somewhere else? Is it to, to learn how this is happening and open my own business and compete? Is it about me being, um, I want this to be my home and I want to, re to retire here? These are two totally three different patterns of, you know, of faith in the future. And, and we will actually attract or, 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 or emerge 
into three different conflicts or patterns that will happen in the in the system. So, so actually here, the, the, these three pillars of trust are actually three of the most important actually um, um, yeah, dynamics that are happening and they, they, they don't always happen in sequence, you know? And sometimes you have, you find somebody who shares values with you and uh, understand, you have faith in the future with them. However, you can't rely on them or depend on them in anything. When you start depending on them, you find them, they're not dependable. They don't have it, you know? Or, or maybe when you start predicting their behavior, they're actually, they're always shifting from one, one, one way to another. So in a way, this will create conflicts. You know, especially, you know, this is something that we see a lot in marriage, you know, <laughs> when people choose each other, they choose for love, for emotions. And then when they start uh, their tasks at home, they start actually in, in a place where uh, they, they can't rely on their competences in holding uh, the house chores and, you know, and holding each other safe in the same home. So this is something that happens. Uh, sometimes uh, in teams, we rely on competence and we don't look at the energy sometimes or the values or the culture and we find things, uh, uh, co many corrupt cultures and conflicts are happening because actually we don't look at the intangible part of the emotional part. And here, uh, uh, making the leaders uh, more um, open and vulnerable with their teams to share their visions, aspirations, emotions, and actually engaging them in real heartfelt discussions that are really below the neck is something that has to be brought to the business context to make sure that we are all aligned in the same in in in, in, the, in the correct direction with the organization policy. Even if if sometimes the cost at sometimes is that we lose people. However, you you win more people who are more aligned and more you know forceful in in the in their intent towards building a better future for this organization and aligning with its strategy, its leadership and its uh, purpose. So the cause of trust is sometimes that we lose some people <laughs> and we lose trust. So um, this is um, uh, one part of, uh, so can, you, can we have a quick check in where we are now? Quick check in. Um, Yeah. Uh, those who. So, uh, I'm not sure if anybody else is speaking yeah. up. So let me just see. So for me, uh, you know, what I'm getting a little bit is um, I need to go a little bit beyond the practical uh, part of the trust and, and, and include feelings and emotions, like treating people fairly with respect uh, because I expect uh, them to uh, treat me the same way. So it's kind of becoming a um, <laughs> fact that the building trust is going to be a hard work. It's not going to be uh, easy. It has to be earned. And, uh, and I will have to be consistent in what I'm seeing. But I'm, what I'm also getting here is that it's a kind of a model of behavior uh, and it, it can be even inbuilt into the culture of organization, which will, which will start more from me as a leader behavior. Am I able to demonstrate rather than me asking the other person to trust me first, I think it will have to be starting from me that am I trustable by others? And that's what is becoming a little, little bit clearer for me, if I might say, yeah. Mm, thank you, Yeah, Timothy, you have something to share? I think the interesting part of being a coach is that when you are coaching the senior level or even the C-suite for that matter, and you got a, you got a client or coach who comes, a uh, coach who comes to you and says that, hey, I, I got a problem, my people don't trust me. And that was the opening statement. So what do we do as coaches? How do we how do we respond to that kind of uh, statement that that is made by our client or coachee? And this these are leaders or senior senior management team members of the, of organization, and which something which I I, I just want to you know, uh, share and, and maybe get some view. Uh, Mohammed, you may share. What, what do you think as coaches? How do we respond to that kind of questions? Yeah. 
Okay. So, so actually, this this is a very good question, and actually here we actually look at uh, something that's there is a big trap that we have in trust, and this is the trap I started with in the beginning of the session, that we always have this scale. It's either I trust you or <laughs> do not trust you. Right, and this is actually, uh, it's either trust or mistrust. So they don't trust me means they mistrust me, okay? So so in a way, he sees it like a black and white thing. And actually he looks at maybe one or two things that he may take, have taken decisions in, and they maybe rejected the decision or maybe um, made something like a revolt on him or maybe fired back on him, on him as a leader. And uh, he, he puts this as, as um, an example that people don't trust him, you know. Yeah, actually, actually, they may not have trusted him in some certain occasions or situations or in some sort of things that he, he, he sees himself, you know, accountable for or maybe looks at. And here, this trap is a big trap of actually of a big failure because actually, whenever we have two things, we have also opportunities on the other hand when it comes to there is you know you know this uh, um, uh, we, we have a big a big land of, of a place where there is a, there are lots of things that the we don't have yet judgments on that is no mistrust and there are not there are big bigger spaces and abundance also of spaces where we have no trust and I'm not sure if you, you understand this from a philosophical perspective. It, it, it doesn't mean that we, we have something that we have only its opposite. It's also, there is also the absence of the trust and the absence of the mistrust. We as human beings, we encounter together. Here in this context, for instance, you knew me as a coach. Maybe you was teaching systemic coaching and maybe talking about trust. You don't know, know me as Muhammad Sharaf al-Din, as a person, as a father as a brother, as somebody who's really a human being who has aspirations, have fears, have uh, challenges, have successes, have failures. So there are lots of opportunities to know the person, to actually to, to have new judgments on them or whether they we can trust and even for the person himself. So if, if, if I take a decision or a wrong call as a decision as a leader, and maybe I don't want to confess about it, <laughs> or maybe don't, you know, because there, there are lots of things that's called, that there is something that's called systemic intelligence, you know, to understand why people revolt on you or maybe they don't trust you. Maybe you don't have the right systemic intelligence to align with how they are or don't really look at them as human beings to predict how they will behave when you take a decision. So it's about you who made the call of, of the action that, that, that actually you have to take accountability on their response because actually it's about you how to lead them to actually to, to address, to, to, to predict, and to actually depend. These are your people. So <laughs> if they don't trust you, it's about something that you did and you have to really recover and really start looking at. So what are the new opportunities here to learn? What, what, uh, what are the new uh, opportunities for you to actually to start looking at things in you that people love? They are here for a reason. They, they, they actually trust the place. They actually trust you to pay their salaries in the end of the, mo of the month. They trust you to do their evaluations. They trust you to present them in the department. So why are you saying that? And that's that's why they are here now. In the here and now, they're still your employees and your staff. So, so we, we explore here around this map. And from this, we find lots of abundance, you know, lots of opportunities, lots of new things that can be done. And actually reading the, pol the political map of the stakeholders, not the stakeholders, the employees at this stage, and seeing how they they actually the social network of the of the employees and their culture, their values, how they were hired, the wrong call, maybe the call itself when it came, how it landed at the situation and the context it was set, the, how it was communicated, you know how they actually, and here we start rebuilding trust in a new opportunity, a new zone, and actually because having this, you know this 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 plan or this map. It opens opportunities to what is not there to come in the system. To, it opens opportunities also for what is there and not acknowledged to be acknowledged. It opens new opportunities actually for coaches and, and leaders to see things, things differently and act as real human beings, full hearted human beings. And this is where things turn around, you know. Because here, here uh, lots of assumptions will break because actually there is no black and white now. 
There are lots of grays, lots of opportunities, lots of green areas. When you're having a system of four different factors, so if I'm asking you again, where are you now in your trust relationships? And will you build trust again or not? What will be your answer? Will it be a scale <laughs> from zero to 10 as we started? Or will we look at our relationships in total different way? And, and actually, when we come to, to teams, as systems, or we come to couples, when we work with them, or come with, with, uh, with community, we especially, and I'll, I'll tell you some examples, we worked back in, in 2011, 2012 with the community in diversity and inclusion. And we had this challenge, you know, here in Egypt, there was a term oil and there were, you know, the Islamists and liberals, you know, and, you know, and, and uh, the socialists and, you know, the different groups here in Egypt. And at this stage, you know, it was always black and white when we come to political, you know, tension. It comes as black and white things, you know, it's, it's really a polarity when, it, I mean, when on the surface, it's a real polarity and the real, you know, it's me or you, you know, <laughs> when it comes here. But when you look at what's beyond the surface and look at, you know, the purpose of the relationship, there are lots of opportunities that emerge and at the end of each and every facilitation that we do, that we find that people from different groups find people that are nearer to them from the opposite groups than people who are with them in the same group, you know? And here the black and white thinking is actually done. We trust in different levels. You know, I can trust you maybe with my money, but I cannot trust you with my children, you know? I can trust you with, you know, so it's not always black and white. And it depends on the context, depends on, you know, so we really have to appear as human beings. And that's why maybe I will answer you back again on is it different between teams and groups in, in at work and and my fa and family at home or maybe community at large, I can tell from my practice. No, I cannot. I cannot see the difference. We are all human beings there, and and the 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 one who is working with me is a is a son or a daughter of someone else outside there, and these patterns that are coming out of him are actually coming in all the systems that are around him, and actually in this context. Does it hurt or doesn't hurt? Does it really, is there a reciprocal value to keep it or not keep it? It's, it's a decision for the business owner to take. However, we still have uh, uh, plenty of, of spaces to actually to connect, not only just at work, you know? So, um, so that's, that's where I actually uh, believe that time now is, is almost done. And we need just to make it maybe a brief uh, learning of what happens in this uh, session and what we learned. So uh, if we can put it just in chat or something. So, uh, and I hope, uh, Timothy, my answer and came to you and landed, yeah, I'm not sure, Yanni. Uh, how, do, how do you see it, Yanni? I guess basically what you shared, uh, I like the point of uh, the question of dependability, the question of uh, you know, uh, the, the, the three, the, the diagram that you show in terms of uh, the three things that we need to look at. Uh, how do we predict first dependability, then the faith? Uh, I guess this is a very systemic way of looking at, at uh, to build the level of trust and also the different elements of trust, as you mentioned. And these are the three elements that we need to. Uh, to be aware of as leaders uh, and I guess in in coaching our client uh, it is to give them that awareness uh, and also the ability for them to, to think through those those elements and see where they are in, in, in those three areas so that uh, they basically know the benchmark or the milestones that they are, they are already in like what you ask the question now where, where are you now in terms of your, your level of trust or where are you now in terms of uh, trusting your people or your people trusting you then maybe the, the the three elements could be a good benchmark or a good uh, gauge for them to be able to see where they are and then for them to get some real insights and ask themselves where do they go from here uh, and that, that sort of help them to be able to have a, a marker or milestones for them to, to work on uh, that, that's, that's how I see it and that, that's a takeaway for me that yeah I, I find that this is something that uh, it can be it can be also looked into uh, it can be also phrased as a question and phrased as a challenge to our client uh, for them to be able to think deeper 
and to look into where they are now in terms of the level of trust. Yeah. Thanks, Mohamed. Thank you, Timothy. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So, um, thank you, Timothy. So, uh, what's, what, what are other takeaways? Uh, please share on chat or share by speaking. Oh, so, um, any other takeaways from the today's session? Okay. So uh, I guess uh, that we we are actually done now. Maybe we can um, just check out. I'm really uh, thankful for you for the attendance and actually for interacting. And actually, thank you, Timothy. Thank you, Gurbinder. Thank you for everyone who shared from the beginning of the session. I mean, uh, and uh, everybody. And actually, uh, Gurbinder, uh, it's amazing how you organize, you're organizing things and actually taking things on your. Thank you for that. I leave now the speech for you to just close the session today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mohammed. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy that you could join us today. It's a working day and, and, and we do not have enough number of people that we would have loved to have today for sure. But, but I'm sure whosoever is today uh, here will be able to trust each other a little bit more, a little bit better. I will surely be taking that learning from the session today and implement it not only uh, in my work, but in my personal life as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much on behalf of ICF Oman chapter for accepting our invitation and being with us. And thanks to all the people who members who attended our session from all over the world, from Kuala Lumpur to Paris. Keep coming. We'll keep sharing our information with you. And we look forward to seeing you soon again in our next sessions. Thank you very much. Have a good morning, afternoon, night, wherever you are in the world. Bye-bye.